Now, if we look at the traditional log cabin that probably is most associated with uh, the USA and with Canada, but in fact, you'll find log cabins of different sorts of design all over the world. But here, what I want to look at is not only how to very simply produce the impression of rounded logs, but also here we've got a tiled roof. But what I've done is converted this, or I will convert this to a corrugated iron roof. Underneath the eaves here, I've done exactly the same as I've done here, except for the darker paint that I've put on here, I've used that as a base coat and then I've done a darker color again to give the same sort of effect. Right, now I mustn't forget these upright posts. I'm gonna leave that one it's important to leave the left hand side, uh, the right hand side light so it stands out. Now the reference picture I'm using, if I'm not mistaken, the base of the cabin actually appears to be resting on rocks to lift it from the floor and presumably that's to uh, prevent damp and so on. Now you can see how roughly I'm just doing these windows, it's one, two, three, one, two, three and I'm going to leave it like that by and large. I've put a little bit of greenery on here just to put the cabin in some sort of appropriate environment. I've put a little bit of pale grey shadow underneath the eaves here because this front part of the cabin would be thoroughly in shadow underneath the overhanging roof. I've just emphasised by putting some darker shadow over here and here how much the uh, windows are recessed. And what I'm going to do now is, as I promised, is to deal with the corrugated iron roof. You notice I've put the roof in a whole series of sheets. You're never going to get a piece of corrugated iron about 20 or 30 foot square to fit over the front of a building like that. In fact, that actually helps you because it gives you some extra texture and lines that you can play with. Now, all I'm going to do to start with is assume that corrugated iron is very new or relatively new and so I'm going to use the same bluey grey, pale bluey grey colour that I've used previously with burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Okay that's dried off now. What I've got on my brush is some light red paint. I'm going to take the bulk of it off because I, I want this almost as a semi-dry paint. You can see like that. And then all I'm going to do is using the tip of the brush is to very lightly stroke down streaks as if it represents those highs and lows, the peaks and troughs within the corrugated iron. But we're starting at the top of each of the sheets like that. Okay, and then we move on to the next one. Already that looks quite effective as a, a rusty corrugated iron roof. You notice I'm not painting the whole of each uh, sheet, I'm just painting some. The, the lighter red rust represents fairly new rust. The darker it gets, the older the rust it is. So maybe this sheet here, over by the corner here, is seeing the worst of the weather. Right, now just to emphasise the front of the sheets, the way the corrugations might be on view, I'm just bouncing the tip of the brush over, hit and miss, not every section. So we'll just put a, a bit of dry brush, light red into the ridge like that. Right, now here's the old door we looked at in the introduction. All flaking blue paint, crumbling stonework. It's got real character. Right, now we're starting with touches of pale raw sienna and ultramarine, just mixed here and there around the door frame for the plaster that's actually remaining. And now what I'm doing is touching an outline of the exposed random stones. It's just shadows really, like we've done in the uh, stones tutorials. And you can see it especially next to where the plaster remains to give that nice recess. Now, a very watery wash of light red gives us a pink tone for these massive stones around the door. And note how I'm painting each stone separately, because that defines the individual blocks. Now you can see how the rigger is painting in those cracks in the plaster and it's also just strengthening the stone shadows and I've, I've just used a little bit of ultramarine blue and light red for that. Okay, next up is a fairly strong ultramarine blue for the door itself and I'll remove the masking fluid and that'll give us the areas where the paint will be flaking away. 
And you can see I'm just touching a very pale blue just to tone down that stark white of the areas of flaking paint. And while it's drying, you can see I'm just putting some strong blue lines in. That's just going to help to define the planks in the door. Now for the door hinges I'm just mixing a very strong blue and burnt umber and that gives us an excellent black. Now that it's all dried I'm defining the flaking paint with blue shadow on the right hand side of each area with the rigger because the light's going to come from the right and create shadows where I'm painting them. And you see how I'm just using the paper towel now to take some paint off the hinges and make them a little bit more worn and weathered. Right, I'm just going to finish off with a blue-grey mix which will create a shadow at the top and the right hand side of the door. But you see how putting that shadow on right away creates the impression that the door is set right back into the stone frame. Right, so I hope you can see now how easy it is to produce some effects of crumbling plaster and cracked and flaking paint, old corrugated iron and rusty hinges and bolts, all dead easy they do add so much character to a picture when they're included.